what we used to think was it was very much like a cat sneezes, you need to isolate them and you need to start them on doxycycline. Like this cat clearly has a doxycycline deficiency and like throw, like, um, and cleaning. We thought we could clean our way out of this. Like it was just a matter of the shelter was just dirty. You know, like I, I helped a shelter and they're like, well, every other day we clean the walls. And I was like, not with <laughs> making the cats sick. Like I appreciate, I appreciate the effort, but guess what? We can invest in other places and kind of let that go because dirty walls are not what's making our cats sick, right? So, um, knowing what to focus on. And like, honestly, cats sneeze, and if it is viral, we're, which it usually starts as, right? Like that's usually what this is, it's a viral thing. So antibiotics don't actually help, it stresses them out more because I've yet to meet a cat that enjoys you coming at them with a pill or an, a syringe. Um, and contrary to popular belief, it's uh, upper respiratory infection is not really considered an airborne transmissible disease. Cats' lungs just aren't strong enough. Dogs, yes. Cats, no. So if the cat is just sneezing and still otherwise perky and not festering, um, we actually want them to stay where they are. So they can stay on the adoption floor um, as long as they're looking good and feeling fine. You just instruct staff that that's who you deal with last. You deal with the ones without clinical signs first, get them cleaned up, um, feed them and all that good stuff, and then um, just deal with the ones who might be sneezing. But they can stay where they are until they, and, if they move on to needing treatment and decline a little bit more, that's when you want to move them to a medical area and isolate them. But that's been a big change we've seen that's worked really well. Because again, it's a move, and moving the cat alone may just cause them to get sicker.